Hello, this is Bruce from Elam.org, Risk Management Framework, and a few other sites. Today we're going to talk about system security plans, also known as an SSP. So what is a system security plan? Well, the reason why you have a system security plan on a, an important system is because if you don't document what you have on your very important assets, then essentially you don't um, have very good security and possibly no baseline at all. What I mean by baseline is, what is the inventory on your system? What is your system comprised of? What are the software components? What are the hardware components? What does the network look like? What are the security controls? All of those things come together to make a baseline of a baseline that you need to monitor. And if anything changes in that baseline, if the network changes, if there's significant additions to the to the software or the hardware or anything like that, then it always has to be documented. And the reason why it's very important to document is because otherwise you don't know what's going on with your system. If something changes, you don't even know when it got there, how it's going. You don't you can't track the life cycle of your network or your system. And so that's a huge problem. If you really have no baseline, if you have no documentation, uh, you really don't have any security. And there's lots of different ways to actually do the documentation. Those different formats of the system security plan, but what you'll find, no matter what format that they that this system security plan takes, it always has some of the main ingredients, such as a description of the system, a title of the system, and then a breakdown of all the security controls of how the system meets those particular security controls. That's pretty much what a system security plan is. So first of all, system security plan, it comes from the NIST SP-818. If you want to know more information about how this is all broke down, how it looks, all the things that should go into a typical system security plan, you can just go to 800-18 and that will tell you everything you need to know in pretty good detail. Now there's lots of different formats of the system security plan. Lately it's been going mostly digital, meaning basically it's a database, you add all the information that you need in there and then the database cranks out a sort of PDF report that has everything that you put into the database. That's the way things are going. You'll see that in EMAS and Risk Archer and many other formats out there. They, that's what they do. So what are the elements that go into this system security plan? Well, the primary elements you'll see in the screen here is that it is in compliance with FIPS 199, meaning that the system is named and categorized. There's a security categorization of the system and it has an impact level of that system. So in our example, we'll have a Kepler Hubble system. And this system, what it does is it, it tracks the satellite movements of both the Kepler and the Hubble and it gathers data from both of these and it compares that data against electromagnetic information from the Earth. That's our system. Now we've got to document this system in an SSP, a system security plan. So we have to make sure that FIPS 199 is implemented in our system security plan. So we need a title and a description of the system. Now in addition to that, we're going to actually have to document all the security controls and all those security controls actually come from the NIST 853. We're also going to have to make sure that the CNA process, or also known as a risk management process, is followed. All the steps are followed and all of that is going to be documented in our system security plan. We also need to make sure that ongoing maintenance of the system is met, also known as continuous monitoring. We always have to monitor what changes happen in the system, what hardware, software, network changes are happening, what kind of new threats that we have to the system, what kind of new vulnerabilities, do we need new patches, all of those things go into our system security plan. So let's go into the system security plan itself. We already talked about a title, pretty easy. We're going to call our system the Kepler Hubble System. That's the name of the system. And we need also a categorization. Now we've determined that it's system security categorization. We've gone through the whole process of system security categorization and we've determined that it's a high. It's a high impact system, meaning if this system gets taken out by attackers and let's say they do a denial of service attack on it, 
it actually is going to impact negatively impact um, the National Science Foundation and they, they won't be able to send critical data out to different agencies that really really need this Kepler and Hubble data for their research and it's very important research so that's why it's a high impact system so what we're also going to do is we're going to document the types of information that we need for this system so what we have is we've got administrative data that is required to get on and off the system and create accounts and all that kind of stuff. We'll set that to moderate. And we also have operator data. So people get on the system and they just basically see the data and then they have to make some sort of an analysis based on what they've got. And let's say we've got some specialized data. It's, it's, um, it's special satellite positioning data and uh, another satellite that collects the the electromagnetic uh, spectrum of the earth and it does some kind of a cool algorithm that calculates how planets outside of our solar system affect our solar system and affect us directly. This pseudoscience, I'm just making this stuff off the top of my head. But let's say it's very critical information. If, if that got into the hands of the competitors, then it could actually damage not only the National Science Foundation, but all the people that they send the data to. So we've documented the name of the system, the impact level of the system, and all the information types that we have on the system. Now, what we also need to do is identify all the stakeholders in the SSP, which means we need to identify people like the information system owner. We need to know their name, their title, even their phone number, their email, everything. We need to know how to contact them. We also need to identify the authorizing official. This is the person who's going to actually sign the document once it's all approved, if it's approved. They may even reject it. So we also need to have the information system security officer. Typically this is the person who writes the document or prepares the document, gathers the evidence. Yes, there's evidence involved with this. It's not just a matter of filling out the things you see here, it's also evidence, or also known as artifacts, that prove that you have system security controls on the system. Other people that might be documented as stakeholders would be administrators, you might also have auditors, but the main people are going to be the document preparer, which is the information system security officer, the information system owner, who's really their main focus is going to be, does the system still work after you apply all of these patches and stuff on it. And then also the authorizing official. Those are the main people, but there's lots of different stakeholders you can actually add. And I'm sure there's some people I'm missing. But let's keep going. We've documented the name of the system, the impact level of the system, and the roles of the stakeholders uh, that are involved. Now we need to move on to the actual system description. So the system description is going to be like an overview of what our system does. So for our system, we can say exactly what it does. We'll just explain uh, that it is comprised of data that comes from the Kepler satellite and the Hubble satellite. It collects this information, it combines it, and does an analysis with the electromagnetosphere, and that data gets disseminated to all of our allies. And so we would explain all the major components of the system at a high level, like if we had, maybe if we had um, a very complex Cisco network, we'd probably want to describe that. Uh, we'd also want to describe that if they had sub-networks, we'd explain here's the sub-networks, here's how they are protected by firewalls, and then we'd want to explain that uh, that data is collected onto a a MySQL database with a um, network attached storage area back in. All of those things would ex be explained at a very high level. So by, by the end, a system owner would be able to understand it. You don't want to get too technical in the system description. You just want to keep it high level and explain what's going on and all the major components that are on the system. Now next you want to do something a little bit more technical where you explain the system's behavior. Focus here is components. So we want to explain what components are there and then maybe go into even deeper detail what these components do and what they're composed of. Next we want to make sure that we describe any kind of system interconnections. So let's say that our Kepler-Hubble data is sent to 
multiple organizations. And one of those is like the University of Chicago. Because the University of Chicago does some extra research on the Kepler data in particular. And so we want to make sure that we've documented that interconnection because that's outside of our network and we want to make sure that there is a secure agreement between our organization, National Science Foundation, and the University of Chicago. So the next thing we want to cover is the related laws and policies. Like all we're doing is listing the, the actual policies and laws that we're referring to. So in our case, we'd have to be in compliance with say, say FISMA because it's a federal system. Um, so the FISMA Act of 2002 uh, or 2014, we'd say that we're in compliance with that. We'd also have to be in compliance with, say, the Privacy Act of 1974. And it, let's say if, if it was a health system, you'd have to be compliant with something like HIPAA. Now, last but certainly not least is the actual system security controls themselves. This is really the longest pole in the tent. It's going to take the longest amount of time because not only do you have to document all your security controls, like if we, if, let's say our system being a high impact system, is has a hundred uh, 250 controls on it that's reasonable 250 controls for a high or more let's say 300 let's say there's 300 controls on it that means we have to document each one of those controls not only do we have to document them but we have to provide evidence that each one of these controls is being met at a certain level let me give you a specific example AU control 2 has to do with audit logs. We have to, first of all, explain how we're doing the audit logs. Let's say we collect the data on a Windows system. So we have to explain that we meet this system security control by configuring each Windows 2008 R2 system to collect security events, event logs. That is what we would explain in the description of that particular AU2 uh, through AU5 control. And then we would actually go a step further. We provide evidence in the form of maybe screenshots from the network attached storage area. Say, here's the logs right here. Here's what they look like. We, that would be one of our artifacts. And we say, okay, we've got Windows 2008 R2 controls. Here's a sample of it. We upload that into our database, uh, our system security plan database. Or if you don't have a system security plan database, you would just uh, take a snapshot of it and include that into the the soft copy or the hard copy of your system security plan But what I'm trying to get at is you have to have evidence of each one of these things so that's why this is the longest poll in the tent and it takes a very long time and the better it's documented the actual easier it's going to be going forward when you have to have things like audits or if you want to know what's the current status of the system or for continuous monitoring if you have to change the system a component how did we do this security control because this stuff it changes all the time it's like a river it's constantly changing you know this if you've been in IT for some time you know that systems always change and that's why it's very important to have continuous monitoring which is something you also need to document in this system security plan those are all the things that need to are constantly documented on your on your system security plan. Now what I'll do for you is I'll provide a link to system security plans that you can actually use right away. If you're just doing this on Word, then you just want the template of how they look. Um, not only can you use 818 system security plan guidance, but you can also just use a template from the government and then it'll break each one of the controls down and all the sections that I've been talking about so you can just fill it out. Anyway, so that's it. I hope that this was helpful. Lots of other things we could have covered like continuous monitoring, CA7. Like there's so many different aspects that we could cover on the system security plans. But I just wanted to give you a very high overview of what it is, why you need it, and what are the components of it. See you later. Hey guys, if you like this video and other videos like it, if you want to get more information about risk management process, system security plans, continuous monitoring, make sure you subscribe, like, share it, give it to your friends, your buddies, comments on it. If you see I'm wrong, please let me know. I'll correct it. I'm, this is learning for me too. I've been doing this for a very long time. However, I love to learn. And let's have a conversation about it. See you later.